<clears throat> oh my goodness, I haven't cleared my throat in a while. That probably sounded disgusting. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. We got about five minutes before the stream. Still tackling a couple last second preparations. Thanks for your patience. It's going to be a fun stream today. Call it a fun. Question. The stream hasn't even started yet. Look at look at your excitement. Oh my goodness. I'll just answer a couple questions right now since I can. When does the beta end? Um, technically the beta did end, but if we want to get like super technical about things, the early access will be completed at full release next year. And early access version still locked to DirectX 11. Yes, I do believe that is the case. We are still ironing out more kinks with the DirectX 12. Um, as such, we ask for your patience since our focus has been on other elements of the game at this time. Bonus answers, yay! Almost ready guys, hang on. That's exactly what we're gonna do. Oh my goodness! It, of course, it doesn't pan the thing. Come on, pan the pan the thing. Pa yeah, there we go. Perfect introduction to Outer Space Two. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the official Rockfish Game Stream, where I am your host and your guide, Eric Schrader, your community ambassador and your servant. Oh my goodness! We are cracking open the vortex today. Mm. Going into Zarkov, we're gonna be talking about it. 
um, when we start the very beginnings here, I want to show you a couple other little things we've been working on. Some quality of life elements, you know, that, you know, it's it's going to bring everything together a little bit more fluidly, especially those who you who don't like wasting their time traveling about. Like you want to get to your destinations, you want to find things faster. Well, boy, do I have some news for you. So let's go ahead and crack this puppy open. We're going to start from the home base and I'm going to show you uh, some updates to some of the challenges. We're, just dump, we're jumping right in. Like, boom, let's do some quality of life first. And then we're going to head over to Zarkov itself. Um, also, I was playing around some colors. And I actually, I really like this ship. Okay, like, I, I know that it's not the one that we had last time. I, I've kind of jumped ahead a little bit. But, like, dang. I, like, I think mixing the coloration with the revealed um, components of the ship makes it feel really raw and then just adding this really reflective black in this red that says don't mess with me punk i don't know i i'm digging the vibes with this ship so this is what we're going to be flying at least for the moment uh yeah so let's go ahead and and crack this puppy open so under the challenges uh we are still working on these there's still new things coming and obviously like there's more coming as well but under Cedo Explorer, this is what I want to talk about. Um, all of you have probably completed this already. If you haven't, you should. It's just a nice little credit bonus, XP bonus, gives you something to accomplish. Um, you can actually go in and track these. Um, I think actually the UI might be different in this version than the one that you guys have, but you can go in and track these so that they show up on your screen. So like in my hangar, it says kill 10 outlaw drones with missiles. This is uh, this particular one of the outlaw hunt being tracked, right? I could track all three of these, but because I completed those two, I'm only tracking this one left. Just nice little, little element for you. But Cedo Explorer, under here you see the master in completing the Cedo Explorer with the autopilot active, <clears throat> get my face out of the way, boost to fast forward time when traveling in the Cedo system. Pretty straightforward. If you explore all of Cedo, then it says, hey, you've done everything. Let me take care of this speed issue for you. So it's just a straight reward for allowing you. Let's, uh, let's go ahead and launch. Straight reward for rewarding you of taking care of everything in Cedo. And look, I mean, I'll even, I'll even say like, I haven't done everything, right? Like I still have other locations I haven't been to, but I completed the challenges of the Cedo Explorer and by doing that, if we want to head all the way over to this unknown location, right? Like, check out how fast we can do this now. We're gonna jump out here in space and normally, you guys know how long it takes. I mean, it takes a long time to get across the system. But now we can lock on and then I just fast forward. And all the sights and sounds that are in between still show up. So if you're fast forwarding and you're like, oh, I wanna do that thing, you can slow down and you can break away and you can do it. Or you can just straight up fast forward and get all the way across Cedo in literally a matter of seconds. Boom, done, we're here. Excellent. And now we could do our location challenge here. Boom, bada bing, bada bam. Wow, that's super nice. Streamer, I don't care, I wanna go to Zarkov, all right. Let's go to Zarkov. <clears throat> Guys, welcome to the Vortex. Looks like we gotta take out some uh, Proto Scouts really quick. Now I'm hopeful we're gonna get a mixture of some new music as well as we're cruising around in here. Ah, yes. Lightning rods. These are a dangerous new environmental hazard. You can start seeing the storm that we're kind of actively in. We have a destroyed colonial warship. It's hard to see around here. Like, if you're not careful, you could throw yourself into a debris field. Oh. Oh, there's that music. Ooh, ooh. 
We got hit. Hit by a lightning storm. Gotta be careful. Ooh. There is a little bit more devious when it comes to your visuals. Obvious. I don't have to say that. You can see it. Duh. <laughs> So we've got these vertical asteroids. You probably all saw the teaser trailer we talked about. This is the aesthetic, if you will, of Zarkov. Oh my gosh, we didn't even see that. You gotta be careful through here. Oh my goodness. Where where are we even at? We're like in a we're like inside of an asteroid. Oh my gosh. Careful. Woo! A shipwreck. Ah, here we are. Zarkov is not so forgiving when it comes to how you can perceive things. It's kind of a mess. Zarkov is kind of a mess. There's a there's a number of How do you even put this? There's Zarkov is introducing a couple of mechanics that you guys are probably familiar with from Everspace 1, right? If you're, if you're a veteran of Everspace 1, you're like, oh yeah, I've seen space hazards, no big deal. I'm, I'm way too cool for this, nothing. For those of you who are not familiar with space hazards and what they bring to the table, uh, basically, if you're not being cautious about how you're flying around, much like you saw in my little combat sequence there, you can start getting thrown about just by the environment itself, okay? Now, I'm not gonna show you anything super hyper crazy ridiculous today, okay? All right, that's that's for later. But, <laughs> but what I will say is that this is a really strong introduction for what you can expect on how the environments are affecting you, okay? Um, obviously we have a visualization that makes things difficult to scan and see it. Dang, dang, nice scatter gun, I'll take it. Um. But there will be ways to subtly counteract this as time progresses. Oh, oh, no, thank you. No, thank you. No, thank you. Let's back up. Nope, nope, nope. All right. Let that explode. Perfect. Okay. Now I want to look around. And you still have lots of hidey holes and places to inspect. Oh, my goodness. Oh, oh, my. This is creepy. Like, look at all these vertical asteroids that collided with this larger one. Just got, like, stuck in it. You can tell this is a gnarly place to be. Oh! Oh, gosh! Uh, that's not good. We really don't want to get thrown around inside a small location like this. But you can see there's there's still a healthy amount to explore and find. I mean, I thought we were in, in open space. This is... This just keeps going. Where are we going? Oh, my gosh! Well... I have to turn around. I hate doing that to you guys, but but rest assured, you can see that there are still a lot of environments and oh gosh, that was close. There's still a lot of environments that need you to keep a watchful eye out for opportunities as you're navigating about. Otherwise you'll end up like this colonial warship. Should look, should look pretty familiar in that regard. Especially this side. That's where the bars are at. Let's take out some more dudes. Mines, huh? All right. Oh my gosh, look at them getting thrown. Look at them getting thrown. Oh, that's great. Here we go. Here we go. Ooh, a raid booster? I guess I should have also mentioned, um, I'm showing you guys like the latest stuff we've been developing. So if there happens to be some awkward sound issues, like maybe the music's looping weirdly or an environmental effect does something really crazy and I instantly die or I show something that I'm not allowed to on the stream, Michael, and I'm really sorry about that. Like, just know that these are elements that can happen through the course of the stream, okay? So, 
It's just a it's just a product of what we're doing and being as transparent as possible so you can see what we've been working on, how things are coming along. You know, it's uh it's been a lot of fun for us to put this together. Musics. Musics. I want to give uh, Tius a shout out because he's been helping me out a lot, making sure things are working as intended as well. So if you're watching the stream, know that we love you. Every single one of these community persons does. They might not know it because of what you do, but thank you. <clears throat> I'm such a tease. Yes, that is that is literally my job. <laughs> oh my gosh. But rest assured, like, oh my gosh, guys. Clint, like, I hope that just showing you this single location is giving you some semblance of how seriously we are taking the environments and how we want these distinct stylizations, these, these themes for each of the systems that we're bringing to the table, right? Like, I'm gonna show you this and it's gonna be a little revealing of Zarkov because you can kind of see this ring here. I should tell you something. But like the vortex, it's in rings, okay? Like, <clears throat> and this this system, it's gonna look very different from Union, okay? There are aspects of it that are similar. Yeah, Union has some nebulae as well, and they have similar colors. Hang on, I'm, I'm gonna get to some more uniqueness in Zarkov in a little bit. Um, and you know, Union has some similar features of Cedo, right? Obviously, there's gonna be that similarity, but each one, each one of these, as we continue moving outwards to all of these systems, we want to have those unique factions that you're encountering. We want to have those unique uh, events that are taking place. We want to have unique environments that can also be hostile to you, that are unique, again, unique to the system, okay? And that's really what we're trying to capitalize and, and show here as we go forth. These are placeholder names, by the way, so if somebody's gonna pause that and take a screenshot, it's not gonna matter. Sorry, sorry to burst your bubble, just giving you a heads up right now. Um, but yeah, so that's that's our vision for how we're moving into Zarkov, and this is the product of it so far. This is the product of it. We're pretty happy with uh, how it's come together. So, we're gonna go ahead and jump out of this one and show you the super light of Zarkov. The music is not done yet, so I believe we're just repeating, repeating Cedo, uh, Cedo travel music. So this is Zarkov and the vortex itself. I'm gonna fly a little bit out of range so you can see a little bit more of this. There's a single massive vortex, okay? Varying dust fields and gases and asteroid belts. All of this is in the chaos surrounding Zarkov star. I mean, this, do this dominates the entire thing, like the ring from, from here all the way to the outskirts of it. I mean, we're, we're still going to the outskirts of it. In fact, you'll see a little thing that tells us that we're going to the outskirts. Any second now, game, come on. Show, show the audience, please. Now. <laughs> At any moment, it's fine. It's Guys, you know, sometimes you want something to happen and it just doesn't do it, it's, it's fine. But you can see just how massive this is. I just flew all the way over it. Oh my goodness. You can really see I mean, this is this is covering. Wow, I really went out there too. This is covering the entirety of the system. That's what Zarkov is. That's why it's called the Vortex. So I want to get to another location, look at it, talk about it, and I'm sure you do too. So that's exactly what we're gonna do. It's not quite a protoplanetary disk, but I like where your mind's at. I like where your mind's at. This is more of like bunches and bunches and bunches and bunches of asteroid fields stacked on top of each other, so like that are in orbit around a star, which I, I get that's actually kind of similar to a planetary disk, but this isn't a reformation of a planet.
Looks like the non-lock speed when in super light increased. Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> All right, so I've been I've been showing this off a little bit. I want to get into this site as well and talk about it. Uh, this one's gonna be like, oh yeah, you know, big asteroids. Oh, I've seen this before, Eric. Show me something new and original. Okay, you know, calm down there. Let's crack this puppy open. So, I mean, this, you're right. This is a, a, a big asteroid. This is a very, this is actually a very big asteroid. This is, this is actually a massive asteroid. Okay, this, this is like, yeah, this is not, this is not small, <laughs> guys. <laughs> this might actually be the largest asteroid that we have in the game at this point. It's pretty big, and I don't, I don't know what that thing is. That, whatever. Let's just fly around here and just soak in the sights. Find some scrap and uh, look at the planet. Ooh, that's a pretty planet. And of course it's a gas giant. Why wouldn't it be? All right, so we've got uh, energy sphere dispenser. We've got a cargo drone. Wonderful. So we're already starting to see that, you know, you do have some of those similar effects and clearly there's gonna be some challenges throughout these spaces. Now, all of the locations I'm showing you today um, I'm intentionally avoiding, avoiding the ones that we have completed location challenges because we want to keep those fresh and new and exciting, right? Of course, right? That's that's part of the goal here. Um, so, yeah, I'm going to keep it more to a tease in that sense. But you can still see, like, oh my gosh. Look. You can still see just how massive we are covering the grounds of these locations and the variety that's coming with them like each each of these asteroids like this is these are like it's hard it's hard to explain this because you've seen asteroids once you so you've seen asteroids a thousand times right but there's still a lot of attention to detail and how the level design works and where the player goes and how they're interacting with that space so yeah, I mean, the asteroids look kind of familiar-ish to Union. And yet they are also very different. Each one offers a little unique twist on what you might be accustomed to. And they may also be positioned for um, other interactions to be had on those asteroids as well. For you to like hang out or whatever. Ah! Somebody's like, oh, show me! Show me that device! Nope. Calm down. We're not there yet. Also, this turret is inside. There we go. Much better. So we've got a different style of base and or ship that you see here. We've got lots of blastable points. We've got more, we got reflecting panels. We got these claw looking things. That looks devious. I'm glad this thing's busted up. Be crazy if we saw one of these in uh, in action. And you know, it's just, you know, the traditional let's find the things, right? You know, find the things. So make sure, especially when you're flying through Zarkov, that you're exploring and you're extracting everything and anything much like you would any any location these guys around. Uh-oh. That's that's not good, actually. Hang on a second. 
Let's give them a virus. And then we need to get that Weber drone off ASAP. Okay. Much better. Oh my gosh, that drone dropped like three items. Do you guys see that? Holy cow, what a generous drone. All right, where we got? Where are these missiles coming from? Nearby base? Nearby base, of course. Of Norse, a, a, a nearby base. Excellent. Oh, there's even there's even more in here. My goodness. It just keeps going. It's like each location was designed with an intentionality to explore and collect everything. Goodness. I don't think drones drop items. I can confirm that drones do drop items. Just not very very frequently. I will say that. Not very frequently at all. Wonderful. So you're seeing, like, there's a lot of little sites here and tunnels and whatnot. Engageables. You could fly through here, for example. Probably don't want to, to hit those. Lots of little nooks and crannies for you guys to explore and extract all the things from. Mmm! This is a new one for you guys to see. If you haven't seen the protector spear. I'm gonna drop it right here. Ooh, a Jaeger! Hmm, that'd be fun to use. These things have uh, no spread whatsoever. Might be a, um, a stat that we end up adding to the weapons to provide a little more clarity, if not here, but in some area of the game so that you can tell that, since obviously it's not listed. But there are certain qualities to certain weapons that just beat out other weaponry. So the Jaeger in the Pulse Laser lineup is the only one that has zero spread. Oh my gosh, that modifier is awesome too. You are totally right. That's a great mod. 2% chance to jam the target's weapon system with each hit for two seconds. I think I think we're gonna swap over to this bad boy. That's uh that sounds like a lot of fun. Alright. So this protector sphere, um, I mean, note that I can like drop it and stay in its territory and whatnot. I could like throw it and maybe boost alongside it if I wanted to do that. But there are different types of energy sources that can provide different benefits while you are holding them um, and what you're trying to do with them. So boom, we get that guy plugged into place. A little bit sloppy-like, but you know what? That's all right. Ow. Who needs shields anyway, eh? We'll take a mine launcher. That's a, that's a pretty good mine launcher. We will replace our missiles. Nice. And then just look, look at the scenery. Oh my goodness. We didn't explore all of this asteroid that planet looks tempting i wonder if there's going to be a location nearby it to get down to it i don't know the vortex itself creepishly hanging out in the background like woo, woo. all right so i've realized that i've just 
I get so excited about these things. I just want to keep talking about stuff going on. I should probably confirm that this is a live stream by engaging with some of you fine folks. Oh my gosh. So um, let's answer a couple questions. <laughs> Getting from the live stream. Um, also, big shout out from all the team members at Rockfish uh, for diving in here as well to answer any additional questions while I am blabbing my face off in over excitement pertaining to Zarkov. Um, I just really want to show you what our team has been hard at work on. I, d I just think that they deserve so much love and support for this because I know you guys are asking about all these crazy features and we will get to some of those, if not all of them, because we're crazy. Um, but right now, obviously our focus is Zarkov and I want to show you that. I want to show you that that's what we've been working on. I want to show you. It's not just a matter of saying, well, that's what our priority is. It's like, look, see, absorb. You know what I'm saying? So let's answer some questions. <clears throat> uh, let's see. I know that guns can have different colored bullets and lasers. To clarify, I thought all weapons in a, in a class were identical other than stats. Eric is talking about the one having a different spread. Yes. Uh, so I'm specifically referring to the Jaeger, which is a Salver Armaments specific uh, weapon. So this is this is what you would call, I guess you could put it under a faction, if you will. Um, so let's talk about the Bloodstar Catalyst here for a second, because some of you may have not seen this yet. This is something we did discuss in a prior stream. I actually have a Bloodstar set bonus on my ship right now, okay? So the Bloodstar Catalyst is a specific type of energy core, much like the Salvor Jaeger is a specific type of pulse laser. So the Bloodstar Catalyst, because we're using this, um, its natural bonus increases the weapon energy output for Bloodstar weapons by 70%. That means that that's, that's the speed at which they recharge. So when you fire all your ammo out of something like a Bloodstar Decimator, its energy comes back 70% faster for it to be used again, okay? It keeps you on the toes of optimizing your Bloodstar weaponry. But that's not all. The Bloodstar Raid set also gives you bonuses based on how many you have in, on your ship. So having two of them means the Bloodstar equipment can now drop from any outlaw at a rate of 8% chance, okay? And with three, which I have, I actually have four equipped. I have Renegade Plating, um, which its natural benefit is 30% repair per GMB and Okar unit kill. So it makes you, uh, you know, want to perform a little bit more like an outlaw to really get that repair factor up. Um, and then we also have the Raid Booster, which this one gives you a 100% increased boost in speed for three seconds after a kill. So it, it's putting a lot of emphasis on this hit and run guerrilla tactics style of play with the blood star the more you're boosting around the harder you're hitting in that sense the more you're going to benefit and the faster you're going to boost and the harder you're going to hit like it just keeps filtering in on itself especially when you see that the third line the third bonus or rather the second bonus for having three blood star items woo! <clears throat> having three blood star items means while you are boosting your Bloodstar weapon damage is increased by an additional 25%. So while I am boosting, this bad boy is dishing out an extra 25% damage. If I get a kill, then I boost even faster. When I'm done firing my weapon, it's gonna recharge much faster so I can begin firing it again. <laughs> and it just keeps looping around in this system that benefits itself heavily for that particular style of play. And each one of the set items, the the, the faction-based uh, weaponry and modules, we want to have a unique appeal to them. So certain play styles, certain players are going to find um, ones more valuable for these styles of weapons or ships or just your own personal preference over others. Mix and match, have a lot of fun. That's how itemization works, right? That's, that's how it be. So that's what we're doing. That's that's all of that. There's a lot of explaining there, but it's important. And then there's this asteroid that's incredibly large and probably has a lot of intricate pathways and I'm scared of doing that. Because <laughs> it's, a, it's a big asteroid. Let's pop in just a little bit, just to show you a little bit of what's up. Ah! Ah! Come here! 
just fine. Oh my gosh. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> no big deal. Everything's fine. I don't know what you guys are talking about. Nothing to be scared there. What's in here anyway? A shipwreck? Why in the world would there be a shipwreck in here? Everyone would have seen that coming from a mile away. All right, let's, uh... So you see, little narrow corridors with secrets abound, like this energy sphere dispenser. Where does it need to be taken? I don't know. But keep a watchful eye, and you'll start figuring out where things need to go and how to navigate these very large interiors within Zarkov. Just keeps going and going. That's just the way we like it. We've said it once, we've said it twice, we've said it a hundred times. We are building out a lot more interior spaces for Everspace 2 because there's just a lot of fun with that close corridor action. And there's a lot more opportunities through it as well. So there's your second location of Zarkov getting shown to you. I've got one, maybe two more to show because I'm just really excited about it. Armor breaker, missile launcher. Mm. There's, a, there's a lot of equipment out here. Let's just pick it all up. They're still, you're still alive? Oh my gosh, look at this devious guy. All right, let's scrap this. Mm. Beautiful. All right, now I'm obviously not gonna reveal all the locations of all the interior spaces and all of that type of stuff, because I want there to be value within your exploration, right? Like, how lame would it be if I basically just gave you a gameplay walkthrough during the course of these streams? I'm not here to play the game for you. I'm here to tease you, and make you want a little bit more. So let's go on to our next location. Excellent. How are you guys liking Zarkov so far? Is it along the lines of your expectations? Are you like, eh, I haven't really seen anything that's really wowing yet. You're like, this is good. Where are you at? Because again, we still have, there's still a lot more here that I have not revealed yet. Let's go a little bit closer to the star, but I'm curious how you guys are receiving it thus far. The ship explosions are smexy. Thank you, we're happy with that. Great new atmosphere, okay, good. Zarkov is dope, that asteroid was cool as F. Watch your language, jeez, it's fine. I don't, I don't really care. <laughs> Just gave it to me already? Okay, all right. It's epic. Shuzan, you have a bias, you can't comment. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's not how that works. <laughs> Nine out of 10, okay. What would make it, what would make it 10 out of 10 for you, Adrian, I'm curious. Just uh, speak to me as a brother, all right? Like, what would make it, what what would give it that extra one? Because we still haven't gone to a lot of other locations. Maybe it's hiding. Looks cool and different. Okay, good, good. But seeing lots of this in Everspace 1. Okay, yeah, that's fair. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah, something to keep in mind. I'm actually, I'm glad you said that, Derek. Um, something to keep in mind. Like, I think... Is either a comment on Discord or maybe in the forums, but there was a, a similar comment uh, made in regards to that saying like, yeah, it feels like we're seeing Everspace One again. And in actuality, that is such huge praise to us, sincerely, because we are building everything in Everspace Two from the ground up again. It's not like we're just taking the assets and pulling them over and like slapping a different color scheme on it and calling it good, right? Like this is from the ground up an entirely new game. And we want to honor and replicate a lot of how Everspace One's aesthetic did look. So you're going to see a lot of those similar styles and looks, and hopefully it connects, and it sounds like it is. 
like as we are going through the DMZ, like all of these locations, well, most of these locations, <laughs> The, the point is, is that your travels through Everspace One, you are seeing these areas without knowing that you're in them. Cause you're just trying to fast travel through. Where in Everspace Two, now there's an intentionality with where you are going, right? DMZ, uh, ah, eh, whatever. The point is, is that we have to make it consistent. But we're also using that theming, right? To make each one of the systems unique in its own right, blah, 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 words I've already said. And we're gonna keep going with each new system. So, so I am glad that you're pointing out and saying it does seem like very familiar to Everspace One. And we'll keep building upon that because there's stuff that you haven't seen in Everspace One yet, or haven't seen Everspace Two yet that never existed in Everspace One. And, and I mean, we, we're flying a ship design that's entirely different uh, for an interceptor that you saw in Everspace One. Um, we've got set items that are completely different from Everspace One. We've got the mission types. Uh, I mean, the fact that it's not a roguelike, I mean, there's a lot of variety here. Ooh. Ooh. Hmm. Getting some vibes, you know what I'm saying? Getting distracted by pretty colors and music, yes. <laughs> but I'm, I'm glad you guys are holding us to a height standard. I'm glad that your expectations are, are pretty solid. They seem pretty where they need to be. If they're pretty, if they're wild, we tend to call you guys out on it. Um, you guys seem pretty solid in what you want and what we're providing and even meeting us halfway to get there. Ow. Now, there is a very good chance that I'm going to trigger a mission in this location. Uh, this is your preliminary heads up work in progress early access not done will change blah 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 so now you know okay just keep that in mind so i do want to inspect this ship a little bit more closely i mean this is this is a large wait that's just the engine i want to inspect this ship a little more closely <laughs> Because this doesn't look like an entirely familiar ship to us. We could go in there, but we flew through there in the trailer. So let's find another entry point. Ah, yes, here we are. So you can see that there are a number of like corridors and whatnot within these ships that you're coming across and still filled with a number of different secrets. Hey, look, the debris is working again appropriately. Thank you. Um, Hans Christian, I think, is the one who addressed that. Hans Christian, shout out to you. Taking care of you guys. We're going to blow this element up. Check out what's going on here. It's a little little bit of... Uh... Here, let's, let's change the view, because I, I recall somebody watching the trailer was like, man, this game would be so much cooler in first person. Okay, let's play in first person for a while. No capacity, oh my gosh, we gotta, we gotta make some room, hang on. Hold on, hold the phone. We are just gonna scrap a ton of stuff. And as a reminder, the, um... actually that's better, let's, uh, let's use that. 
As a reminder, you can highlight all of these goods in the current build. This is an available feature right now. Um, it's hidden only because we haven't taken care of all the necessary elements to convey how it works to the player. But if you hold control and you left click, that's how you highlight items. And then you just dismantle all um, very quickly or destroy all depending on what item type it is. Um, also, if you are really, 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 if, if you're a hoarder and you want to store it all, you can also do that all at the same time as well. I'm going to sell these commodities. Like all of those features, they do work in tandem with one another. So that is how it's all working. Everspace 2, the FPS. Get out of your ship, Eric. Whoa, calm down there. <laughs> I do want to make sure nobody thinks that in Everspace 2, you will be getting out of your ship. Um, the entire design direction of the game is the ship is your character, all right? So keep that in mind. This isn't something that's going to change. This is not something that's going to change. You are playing with and as your ship. Now, cutscenes can be more definitive of the pilot being out and about, but uh, I digress. I have spoken. <laughs> All right, so we got a power core. We got an energy core. I'm just gonna scrap it. Oh, wrong way. So for anyone paying attention to the little quest that started spawning here, clearly we need to do a little bit more in the area. We have to take the stranded pilot to a nearby maintenance dock, blah, blah, blah. Don't worry about that. Again, placeholder content. I want to be very, very clear in what that's offering, what that means. We're going to zip on out of here. We are not going to complete this mission. It's not ready for your eyes yet. Nay, I say to thee. I don't know about you guys, but that's like creepy vibes. We're having a lot of fun with putting these components together. Oh, hey, there's something over here. Resources? Yay, resources. So you're getting really a, a strong, I hope you're getting a strong sense of scale here. Cause like, we're kind of like the vertical asteroid section of this, but we left the debris field. We left the ship and its mission. So uh, we are trying to take a lot of great care in what these locations are offering, both from a visual perspective and also from, you know, an engagement gameplay perspective. There's a lot to to skim through here, a lot to, to observe. The size of these locations isn't as small as you might think. Did I just see something moving? Did you see something moving? All right, well, we'll get out of here. <laughs> Jump disabled during mission. Okay, now hang on a second. This is, I didn't sign up for this. <laughs> We're gonna have to back out of this location, but oh my gosh. Um, let's go ahead and uh, do the cheesy maneuver to get out of here. Cause we can't complete that mission yet guys, sorry. 
I'm not allowed. Can't do it. <clears throat> but I do hope that you're enjoying these locations, these sites. And seeing just how much uh, it's it's bringing forth. There's a lot of new ways we want to approach similar-minded locations, right? Because the last thing we want to do is just, like, copy and paste locations over. I feel like that would be cruel, but also lazy, and nobody's going to have fun with that. Um, now, um, I've shown you three locations at this point. Um... Some of them have some similarities to them. Obviously, you're seeing some unique colorizations. You've got the music going on. Um, hopefully giving you that appropriate vibes. Now, there are a number of other locations here which are just simply not ready to show yet. I do hope that you guys did check out that Zarkov trailer, though, and seeing more snippets and sneak peeks of some of those locations. Um, I am probably going to take you to this one as well. I have to be careful here because there's some work in progress stuff that cannot be shown. El Reaping ask any chance of space creatures? Yes. I'm looking forward to causing barrel rolls with the vertical asteroids. Yes. Very good. Space horror moment. Yeah, we want to provide a lot of varied vibes from the locations you're going to. I mean, I think a lot of Cedo is more of that casual, like, I'm a space explorer. Look what I'm doing. I'm super cool. I'm vibing. It's great. I've used the word vibing a lot, so I'm sorry if I've offended some particular generation in doing that. Uh, but rest assured, like that's really what we're going for, right? We want to have these these feelings evoked. And Cedo is very much that casual exploration territory that lets you take the reins, uh, figure out how to handle your ship, see how mission designs and layouts are, experience the elements of the game in a more casual approach, a, a lighter approach. Then you get to Union and we're starting to see a little bit more of that mystery surrounding everything, right? We're starting to see um, natural um, structures and uh, organic spaces that you're experiencing. You're starting to see a lot of trade routes. Like look at the number of locations here. It's kind of bonkers actually. Um, oh, actually I'm revealing some that haven't been shown yet. Ho <laughs> ho, whoopsies. Um, <clears throat> but like you, you're seeing like, there's a lot, the, the, the point is that there's a lot, like it's opening up into this new territory. Now you're getting to like the trading, you're seeing a lot more factions, you're seeing, uh, the Okar interactions. And then Zarkov is much more volatile. And I certainly hope you're getting those vibes from the locations we're going. I said it again. Goodness. Learn a new word streamer. Anyway, it's cool. You can vibe. Okay. Dodge the bullet on that one. <laughs> Excellent. Classic space shooter. Relax. Blow stuff up. <laughs> nah, it's all good. Wait, check my... Oh, check, check my details. Hang on. Check my mic gains? Oh, no. We having some problems? One second. Anyone having issues with my mic sounds? Are we, uh, am I coming across correctly or does it sound like things are weird? Does it sound like things are wonky? Sorry about that, I'm so, I apologize. It's clear? It's good? Uh, just letting you guys know who were asking about it. Everything on my end seems to be checking out correctly. One second, guys. I'm gonna check. I'm gonna check a quick setting. One moment. Thanks for your patience. You know, it's always fun doing these live streams because you never know what's gonna come up. It's like, oh hey, I accidentally revealed something that we totally have planned for like two months later. Or oh hey, your mic isn't working. You're dumb. Fix it. You know, it you never know what you get. It's great. Um I just I'm just doing a, a triple check here. No, all my settings check out. I, I feel like a mild bit of clipping. Okay. Um, 
yeah, I, I don't think anything's off here. It should be pretty consistent, uh, pretty normal for the, the streams where we're at. Um, if you guys do hear more issues with the mics, if there's any concerns, yeah, go ahead and let me know again. I'm gonna keep going with where we're at. Everyone's saying it's fine. Everyone's like, you can lower yourself 2%. I, I do speak loud, especially when I'm excited. Um, when I get extra excited. So that's like every half a second. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness also picks up my bottle rattling i i might be touching the bottle too much because like i get fidgety oh my goodness let's i put the bottle down okay bottle down focus in here we do this let's go to another location uh this is going to be the last one but like i said i am going to be a little bit more cautious here um i think this one has a really nice aesthetic I think it, it paints a really strong picture, I think, of what Zarkov truly is in this massive spiraling vortex as well. Just a very, very large space with gases floating about, those vertical asteroids that you're growing accustomed to in Zarkov. Heaven and Zarkov, woo! I would never put heaven, I would I would never associate Zarkov with anything close to heaven. Oh my goodness. But you can see, see just how things are lined up here to where if you want to go exploring in this territory, you're not gonna be able to see very well. But there's a lot here. Let's go destroy some folks. And then we'll go help Elik out. We'll go help Elik out for a little bit. I will, and then we'll come back to Zarkov. <laughs> okay, let's use our Bloodstar weaponry to capitalize on the damage output. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that feels good. And everything in this location is just out of view. You got these little dips in the clouds. Little dips. Look at that little dip. Oh, 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 what's that? What's that? Oh, oh, I don't know. We can't go down there, folks. I'm not allowed. <laughs> but you can see it's coming together. All coming together. And truly, we are very pleased with the results thus far. There's still a lot more to come. I'm only, this is only location four I'm showing you. Only location four. Let's try and complete our outlaw hunt since that's been on there for a while. Oh my gosh, we, we absolutely savaged that Ravager. Wow. That felt really good. Uh-oh, where am I at? Oh, goodness. Yeah, you don't want to get lost in how you're flying around in this territory because this is one of those spaces. I feel like this is, this is the epitome of why having your inertia dampeners on is a true benefit. <laughs> How many locations are there since this is number four? Well, I can't tell you like the exact number that there will be, uh, but you can see like the ones that we've been working on, the ones that we're fleshing out are on the screen right now. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Eleven 11. 11 locations that are in the mix as of right now that could very easily expand some of those locations might be pulled back. You never know what happens in game dev. We certainly don't. We try to plan for a lot of different outcomes to get the best of both worlds. 
Uh, but yeah, so you can see like Zarkov still uh, getting worked on, but there's a lot more stuff to, to bring to the table to explore. And all the locations I'm showing you, I, I am choosing specific locations um, that's not going into that hyper reveal factor, especially of those of you who have seen the, the Zarkov trailer and know that there's more to be found out here. Um, we will have a lot more to show pertaining to Zarkov, uh, maybe even next week, maybe in a couple weeks from now, but this is something we will continue to explore. Something that I'm gonna just like splurge on and I'm gonna like trigger my mic and then my boss is gonna be like, bro, fix your voice because it's dumb. And it's gonna be awesome. We're gonna have a really good time. At least I hope we do. <clears throat> I missed it. What is Bloodstar? Oh my gosh. Um, here, I'll I'll hover I'll hover over this. Uh, I'll hover over this because it's easier to read. Take a screenshot if you want or something. Um, you can kind of see where we're going. Uh, basically, set items. Update on level cap in the next update. Uh, still planned. How far we go? I'm not sure. How much does the level matter in the in the current expanse of the game um, versus how much does the content of the game matter to the player? That is what I would ask. Because we are putting a lot of emphasis on content right now as opposed to emphasis on like the structuring of, well, I shouldn't say the structuring of because we do have a lot of structure behind the leveling system. But I think you understand what I'm saying, right? Like. If we raise the level cap to 30, like, what does that mean? You know? So, yeah. So, just, I'm just basically letting you know, like, our priorities right now, we want to work hard on Zarkov. There is a planned level cap update. Um, We'll see where it leads us. You know? See how it feels. You're enjoying being a tease a bit too much? Probably. I want, um, So, that's why I'm going through and answering questions now, because I want to make sure I'm not, like, Getting too crazy here. When will we be able to customize our ship wings, cockpit, thrusters, etc.? Jcap, this is a great, great question. Um, and, you know, at one point in the past, I think I maybe even said to you all that we were hard at work on the variations for like the gunship and the scout, right? And while this is, while that was true at the time, we also had to adjust our priorities a bit in order to make sure we're getting the promises out the door, right? Um, but more so, we need to make sure that we're adjusting our own scheduling so that we don't go crazy. <laughs> and while we absolutely want to give you more customization on the ship front, we also know that that customization doesn't really mean too much if there's not content to do anything with it. And that's why we've been focused on adding new properties to items like the Blood Star set, for example, We've been working on new modifiers, um, like the, that's not the modifier. Did I, did I remove, where's the plasma? I, I got rid of it. Oh no, I, I loaded a time before I had it. Whoops, anyway, um, <clears throat> but new modifiers to equipment, um, the new uh, special ship characteristics and whatnot. Um, I'm a big fan of the special on this one where weapons use boost energy after weapon energy is depleted. Uh, so if you're wondering like what that looks like, it's kind of like Everspace 1 rules. So just watch my weapon completely deplete here. And then my thruster is depleting. It's still firing. It's using my thruster. And then once my thruster's gone, the weapon can't fire anymore. So little things like that. Um, we're hard at work on adding that style of variety to the game. And then once that variety is in place, then it's going to be like, now let's customize and get crazy with it. And then we're going to go back and we're going to touch up and refine how the different wings work together. And a modular system as well, like, it might sound like, oh, you just have to create a new set of wings and slap them on there. There's a lot of adjustments and tweaks that have to go. Like, for example, even something as simple as, let me see if I can capture it in the moment. Like, something as simple as the lateral thrusters like these have to be cautiously and carefully placed with each iteration of the wings themselves as well. Like there's there's a lot, there's a lot of little details that take place with each little adjustment. And we're talking, you know, at, at the end of the 1.0 launch, it's going to be nine different classes of ships 
that each have at least four different wings that have at least like, I think it's eight different bodies, eight different engines. Like, those might sound like small numbers, but when you start multiplying them together, in addition to the ship colorization and a lot more of the customization that we still haven't revealed yet, it starts getting pretty crazy in there and it takes a while. So that's why we've shifted that focus. Um, but so you're aware, uh, we do have some of those wings uh, working. Like for example, these wings, this is the tier two of the interceptor. Um, this has been shown in trailers before, so I'm not getting in trouble by showing something new, I promise. Just wanted to point that out to anybody who's watching that's on the team, like, how dare you? No, it's fine. Um, so you can see like subtle little changes, subtle little improvements here. We'll go back and then you, you can see how that changes, right? And you know, those engines in the back, that's also a modification to the engine itself. Like now we have extra thrusters there, right? But our lateral thrusters are gone, right? And so we've had to, we've had to like sacrifice and, and, uh, think about those specific directions of what we take as we're developing through the process. And it just so happens that that customization, man, I'm still talking about customization, but you, you get it. I know you do. <laughs> it's a, it's a massive process. It's a massive process. Um, okay. So how about GPS signal consumables? So you can mark what you've already explored in a location. Uh, we'll actually have more details that help you know what you found, uh, uh from locations that will be showing up on the map itself, uh, in a future update. So, uh, so don't worry too much about that. But, uh, I will say, uh, that that would be pretty dope, wouldn't it? Math, he knows it. Thank you for your confirmation, Matt D. I did go to school. Mm. It's the current plan to still have both a modular body kit system with stats attached and also a transmog system. That is still currently in the plan. There hasn't been a lot of progress according to the transmog system, especially since that's gonna be a late game element. Um, but yeah, that that has not changed. You are correct, Hellgrave. That is still on track. Racing stripes make it go faster. Christmas lights make it jollier. These are both true statements. Uh, figuring out what you've done and what's incomplete is difficult. Oh my goodness, isn't it? <laughs> so let's see, what else we got? Any more questions? Looks like... Looks like we're mostly caught up. If I missed a question out there, uh, feel free to ask again. Um, and just another big shout out to um, all the rock fix uh, rockfish folks in the chat backing me up answering questions as well you guys are awesome all right and for anybody who's kind of wondering like where's zarkov at in the whole grand scheme of things we do have eight star system scheduled for the 1.0 release that is the intent we are on we are looking at zarkov now which will be launching next month and then three months from that point, we'll be working on another system to launch to you guys. Wow. Wow. So that's, that's, that's fun. That's nice. And we also see some really big bulky uh, combination asteroids here too. So um, if you're wondering about like interior spaces of these style of asteroids it very well could be a thing in the near future all right oops let's fly off into the sunset do another fly around in zarkov itself so you can see um we're actually a bit more near the center. Let me see if this toggles correctly. I know we had this working the other day. It might not, it might not work. We're gonna see if it does. Nope, no. No, it's not gonna tell us the regions. That's fine. You 
You can also fly, just for what it's worth, you can also fly into the Zarkov ring. Like this. There's not like any hazard sort of discrepancy going on where you just like instantly die when you pass through this. Look, we had to make some decisions when it comes to flying in super light. And at the end of the day, we decided that this is your traveling system. We don't want to hinder your traveling system in a way that just like instantly kills you or anything like that. So if you're expecting to fly through this and your ship just like starts taking chip damage, not really on the list of things that we want to do. When you get to your locations, that's when you're meeting the challenges. Kaite has a new color. Ooh. Very observant, Bloodstar. But yeah, I was, I was actually, um, I was informed. I was informed that it's uh, Kaite is how it's pronounced. Sh uh, shout out to Casper. Thanks, dude. Because <laughs> I suck at pronouncing things. Let's be honest. <laughs> Kaite. Kaite. Uh, oh. Less yeet, more eat. <laughs> I hope it's full of cat people as an inside joke. Mm. I see what you did there. I see what you did there. All right. I really want to go to this location. But it's not quite ready yet. This is going to be one of those locations that when we show you, I think you guys are going to really, you're going to really be pleased with Zarkov. But for now, we are going to head on back over to Cedo. I want to finish up a mission called Gathering Dust. This is one that um, I'm pretty sure is in the current build. I think. <laughs> oh my gosh let's go back to the home base real quick i'm using cheats so anybody who's wondering like how i travel back so quickly that's why there are fast travel elements that will be implemented in the future so no worries whoop right in here cool are planetary collisions gone for good then? Um, I'm trying to wonder what your context is like regarding planetary collisions. Was there something we said that they were going to be there and now you're saying they're gone for, that sounds strange to me. Um, all I know is that when you're looking at the map in a traditional map sense, not a realistic space map sense, um, like all the planets and locations, they are not moving around in an orbit. Uh, they're static, so those planets can't actually like smash together. Um, oh, yeah, yeah, the hangar is a little bit bigger. Uh, I think that there are changes. Are there changes visually in this hangar? I don't, I don't know if there's that. I don't know if there's that. I think that more, might more be an effect of um, just the angle that we're looking inside of this hangar. But I do have I do have um, a couple different ships here. Otherwise, we are going to, you know, whatever. I'm just gonna throw this stuff in my storage. I don't really want to deal with it because I don't want it to take too long for the stream. So I'm just gonna plop it in there just boop I missed one how dare I where I'm from Kaid is the sound a dog makes when you step on its tail <laughs> oh my gosh everyone's asking about my German guys I do not I do not speak German like there's one there's one thing that I can say in German, and it's when I hear something that's really, really awesome. And so I respond with, Ja, das ist sehr gut. 
There's your there's your German. <laughs> I do listen to a lot of German and I can like I'm starting to pick up on things, but I just can't speak it very well, okay? So uh take that as you will. I'm sure somebody on the team's like, did he really just say that word that way? Yes, I did. Fight me. <laughs> Stream paint job. To oh yeah, we can do a paint job. Let's let's uh what colors you guys want? Hit me. First color's coming from YouTube, second color's coming from Twitch. Third one, um, I don't know, but hit me with colors. Let's see what we do. We got a lot, we got lots of colors. When you leave a sector near a planet, you get a planetary collision warning and have to adjust autopilot does it for you. Uh, yes, that is correct. Also, I want to mention that right now you can <laughs> you can fly through planets, uh, you can fly through stars without any repercussions whatsoever. This will change. Okay, this is uh, <laughs> just <laughs> crimson red is the first choice. So we're going with crimson red from YouTube, first color. Second color is from Kazaa, who is super fast. Light blue, wants it to be metallic. Uh, crimson, uh, I need to ask. The Legend 27, uh, you said crimson red, dark red. Do you want it metallic? Do you want it normal? What, no hot pink disappointment? We're not done with the colors yet. We're not done with the colors yet. Do you want it metallic? Reflective. Oh, that is what you meant, Spoon Knight? Okay, gotcha. Is there a magenta color? Eh, not so much. This is the most magenta we can get, the Royal Navy. Wait, that's not magenta. Guys, I was thinking violet. Just, sometimes my brain does this thing. <laughs> no, there's no magenta color though. Goodness gravy. Uh, <laughs> the most embarrassing part of that is that I went to college for art. <laughs> oh gosh. Oh, whoo. Ch pretending that magenta is, is purple. Wow, okay. Um. <clears throat> put that one in the embarrassing moments for a live stream. That's fine. Everything's fine. But yeah, this is this is going to be the closest thing to like a, a purple. Uh, we don't really have a magenta at the moment. Maybe bonfire would be closest to it. Uh, like, uh, yikes. Yikes, guys. There's not really a magenta. There's not really, maybe... There's, no, there's just not a way to make a magenta. Not yet. CMYK color standard not supported yet, right? Um, okay, so I like the, the red and the blue going on, so I'm gonna choose white to top this off and we're gonna make it obnoxiously white, okay? So we're gonna have like that be our highlight. I'm liking this, I think this, I think this comes out well enough. Um, but I will say, like, Matt D saying hot pink confirmed. Um, I will say this, like, um, we've had internal conversations about what the ships provide currently, and I am planning on talking a bit more about it with certain team members. Um, there's just other <laughs> stuff that's been coming up. But rest assured, we do want to add a bit more variety to your options here, especially, especially when we look at the emissive lights and how there's only 15, and yet, it's got a purple, it's got a pink, kind of magenta-ish, right? Like it's, it's got, it's, it's got a bit more flexibility in its color choices with less color choices, right? So do note that we are taking this in and we are going to be fleshing this out, fleshing, fleshing, fleshing this out a bit further for just color options alone. I can 100% confirm that. Um, and I believe that color pack is only going to be $12.99 uh, for US users. And I think Europeans is 20, 20 pounds. Is that right? Is that, 
Just kidding, that's dumb. <laughs> Obviously, we'll be adding that in, in, a, in a free update. That's not goodness gravy. Somebody like, somebody had a heart attack right there. You know it. It's, yeah, we're still adding more to the game. That's all I'm saying. All right, let's, uh, let's make the, the lights white. That seems clean. Yeah, that works. We'll do that. Hang on a second. I'm getting notifications. Get out of here, notification. Oh, wait, was that from my boss? Hang on. <laughs> One second. One second. Make sure I didn't miss something important. Oh, my gosh. Okay, no, everything's good. All right, cool. Let's get back in it. <laughs> so we've got our America flyer, apparently. I did pronounce that correctly. America. Perfect. Might want to ask your tuition back. <laughs> nice. Nice. Um, I want to finish. Here, let's let's go over here again. Let's let's fast travel over here. Woo! Look at that ship, how fast we're going! Woo! -hoo! Wait, what's this? Hang on a second. Hang on a second, I haven't done this. Oh my gosh! It's uh, it's too much! Oh! I just really hurt somebody's eyesight there. I'm sorry. So we're gonna head over to this asteroid cluster. We're gonna destroy some of uh, fauna or flora. We're gonna destroy some flora. Pounds in Europe, nice joke. I know, right? Oh my gosh. All right, let's take these guys out. Go in here. It's like I've done this before or something. Uh, where's the destructible? Nope, where's the destructible? Ow. I missed one more pocket of critters. Is that all of them in there? I think it was. Yeah, okay. We got some iron deposit and stuff. Screw that, I don't need that. Where else? One more over here. Aha! Easy peasy! Give me that titanium. Mm. This ship feels strangely fast right now. I'm not using cheat codes, I promise. What's up? Actually, let's inspect our booster. What do we got on this? 404% acceleration. That's actually, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. Um, Pretty solid thruster. Okay. Neat. Oh, another shipwreck. Let's, let's check it out. Oh, Michael, thank you so much for dropping that link about uh, in-game content. Yeah, we've we've actually, there's, that's such a long conversation that it's so much easier to digest in the package of a link to read about. Um, Cause there, there is a lot, there is a lot. And if I start ranting on that, we're gonna be here for another 40 minutes listening to me talk about in-game content. So we're gonna, I'm just gonna kind of ignore that one, go let that go by. If you're interested in, and uh, in-game content, Michael did share a link from the Rockfish Games channel um, over on YouTube, which you can read about. There's a lot of really cool, little insightful things about not only what's in the plan, but also just our vision in general. So if you're watching the gameplay here and you're like, oh, well, this looks like a space sim. Well, um, again, like <laughs> definitely do a little bit of reading. Uh, see where our vision lines up. I'll straight up say we are not going for a space sim style of game. I know it has an appearance like that, um, but that that actually changes 
the very nature of our presentation and everything that comes with that pretty significantly. So yeah, we got some, we got some elements. Yeah, for sure. But it's far more focused on looting and shooting and a take on an open world RPG setup. And TS again, thanks for fixing the music. Big shout out. Just making sure he's getting all the praise here. Super fast mode. Go to the undiscovered site. Thanks, Michael, for sharing that over on uh, Twitch as well so that nobody's getting left out. Nobody likes getting left out. So glad it's not a space sim. Yeah, I mean, it's just its just what our vision is. I'm not saying like space sims are bad. It's just not what we're doing. That's all. That's all. That's all I'm saying. I want to make sure that your expectations out there are aligned with this line of thinking. Because if you're trying to expect a space sim when we're not making one, that's, that's a big problem. It's a pretty big problem. So uh, that's, that's all. It's all good. Why outlaw scouts here? Oh my goodness. I guess we're hunting outlaws in this location. Wonderful. All right, there we go. Weber drone, Weber drone. Will you ever get a bobblehead in the cockpit? So much like the wings and the customization uh, timings thereof, uh, we do want to make sure that um, the presentation we have for all things fun and freaky pertaining, like if we were to venture into that territory of, of cockpit um, aesthetic, tweaking and modifying and additions. Um, that would be something that comes far, far later in development. So keep that in mind. Um, that said, I don't think we've actually made any official statements pertaining to in cockpit customization. So um, I do want to just make sure that expectation right there is pretty tempered. I'm, I'm trying not to, I don't want to be disappointing to you guys. Like it, there's, the, the possibility is there, okay? I, I want, I'm just being very like honest with you all, okay? There are possibilities of that style of customization in the future. It's just not a priority, okay? Um, and it's not something that we did promise. So just know that that's where we're at. That's how we've kind of been developing forward. Um, so if it shows up, if, you know, maybe there can be something that we do that's really cool with that. Is that fair? Is that cool? Is that fair? Oh my goodness. Arr, I'm aggressive! A little too aggressive. Much better. Delightful. I know somebody out there hasn't seen ultimates being used yet. That is the Interceptor's ult. It's called Weapon Overdrive. And basically it turns you into a monster that feeds. Wonderful. So another location challenge down. Just like finishing these up. It feels good. Don't destroy space. There's a lot of resources out here and I'm gonna completely ignore them, which would be a terrible thing for you to do as you're playing this game. Since resources will inevitably have value with our trading and mining update that's coming in the future somewhere. All right. We're going to head over to this location as well. 
We're gonna speed up time. Woo! Look at how fast that planet goes. We're gonna slow down. I wanna do this unknown signal instead. Look how fast we get into that. Look how fast. Completing that Cedo Explorer is how we got this speed up time thing, okay? I just wanna, I wanna make that very, very clear here. So I'm gonna show this again for anybody who missed it. I talked about this at the very start of the stream. Um, challenges are going to have unique rewards to them, um, as well as your, re uh, your relation, your relationships, your, re your, your reputation. <laughs> I mean, it's kind of the same thing. It's the, it's, it's, it's fine. Anyway, um, within Cedo Explorer, the benefit that you share once you complete it is that you can then explore Cedo faster. So. You explore the nooks and crannies of Cedo. It says, all right, you've earned it. Now you can traverse Cedo super fast. That's how that works now. Will the fishing update uh, be implemented? Oh my gosh. You guys. You guys are silly. Is console version coming in 22? Um, Kurugami. So we have, we're going to have some statements about console versions. Um, actually... Michael, do we do we have statements on console? I know it's summer 2021 and it's we're getting pretty close to having more statements pertaining to that. Um I'm legitimately asking Michael right now. He's the CEO of Rockfish Games, my boss. Um cuz I'm legitimately not sure if we have gone through any new red tape in that territory. Um so he might he might have a little statement on this in a moment or two. Uh, but the long story short, our current position, I know, is that we are, I mean, obviously we want to have console release and we want to have that release for consoles being at the same 1.0 release for PC. That's the dream, right? So that's the goal that we're aiming for. Um, and I also know that we will have more information pertaining to consoles um, pretty soon is the way I'm understanding it. Fairly soon. Um, but before I put my, uh, proverbial boot in my mouth, I'm going to take a step back from that. If Michael has more words on it, he will drop it here in a moment and then I will relay that. But a good question regardless. Romance the crew missions, not really where we're going with the companions. Uh, not, not really. This game clearly needs fishing. Well, first you need a fishing rod. Hmm. Interesting. Okay, so Michael says we we will have more information regarding the consoles, uh, the console release later this year. So we're not, we haven't quite reached that point yet. Um, so thanks for that clarity, Michael. I do appreciate that. And I'm sure that the community does too. So awesome stuff. Uh, let me just very quickly make sure that there aren't any other floating questions and then we'll get right back to it um okay i think we're caught up so you plan to release 1.0 in summer 2022 uh that's yeah that's correct There's probably some space antennas floating around in space and some cable or wire works fine for a fishing... Oh my goodness. I should read comments before speaking them aloud to the stream. Nurston! <laughs> you guys are really hung up on the idea of fishing right now. All I will tell you is that there is a hook coming. All right. Bunch of enemies here. I kind of wanted something a little different. I wanted to blow up a base, but this is fine. I need to get that armor drone first. All right. Oh! Target's changed. Weber drone's priority. Oh, this is, this is actually pretty bad. That armor drone! Woo! Oh, good.
was much closer than it should have been. Okay. Much better. Those Weber drones, let me tell you what. One thing that I was trying to do there, and I was going to talk about it, but uh, things are a little too hot and heavy, <gasps> um, is that if you're getting pulled by a Weber drone, uh, one of the tactics you can do is actually push it away from you, like literally. Um, so you can use the magnetic repulsor, which I'm using right here, and target it, and when you push it, it frees you. And I did that uh, to try and get some distance. Uh, it wasn't enough, but, uh, you know... Sometimes work things work better than uh, <laughs> in your mind than they do in uh, practice. Progressing. Why am I destroying them like this? We need to destroy them with missiles. Goodness. There's too many of them. Yeah, basically. Okay, I want to target this very specific drone. Okay, good. Now. Really? You didn't? Oh my goodness. That's unfortunate. All right, we have one more drone left to take out for that mission. And once I'm satisfied here, we'll go back to Zarkov. We'll look at those areas a little bit more. A little more detail. Oh, I'm completely full. Uh, let's change our weapons up. Let's, uh, let's cycle them out a little bit. I really wish we had a different... Um, I, sh I should keep using the Decimator, though. I really wish I had the other Bloodstar weapon, the Repeater. That's what I was hoping to find. But you can't win them all. Unless there was one that dropped and I missed it. This is not Bloodstar. But it could be real good. So we're going to use this one. We'll use this one instead. Anyone here played Subnautica? Yes, I have. <clears throat> Seen some major, minor, excuse me, minor space life forms in Union and Poison Flowers in Cedo. Yep. Uh, why push it away when you can use their boost device to fly away from everything? Uh, because I don't have the boost, boost device equipped right now, Matt D. That's not the play style that I've optimized my ship for. And uh, if I were to change my device out, uh, I think the devices are on a cooldown as well when you cycle them. If they're not, they should be. Maybe they're not. Oh, if, if the device isn't on cooldown, you can cycle it out. So, uh, no, technically I could have done that. You're right. Not sure how I feel about that being so easy to use in that sense, but uh, I digress. Okay, so let's uh, let's head back to Zarkov. So we'll go back to this location. Just dev tool your way around the lack of crafting blood star. <laughs> oh my goodness. All right, welcome back to Zarkov. Cool. 
Man, our color looks much brighter in here in this area. Outlaw hunt challenge completed. All that we have next is to destroy an outlaw base from an unknown signal without taking any hull damage. So you just have to make sure your shields and your armor last, and then you can complete that challenge. Um, and that gives you a 10% discount on all equipment items at the Flying Duchess. We have already received a little bit of feedback pertaining to that. Uh, just remember that these aren't always set in stone. This might change. But I digress. We're not too worried about those right now because we're looking at Zarkov. So this is one of many locations in Zarkov that shows you the effects of this storm. Oh goodness, I went too far into it. Okay, there we go. Now I know uh, Giho's been, <clears throat> excuse me, Giho has been hard at work on the sound design, so that's why you're hearing a little bit more uh, music that's coming out. Um, ooh, ooh, pretty. Um, you're hearing some environmental effects. I'm pretty sure we're still working on more of those. You may have heard some of that uh, in the trailer itself, in fact. So a lot of what I'm showing you here is, I mean, technically it's work in progress. Like, so it's only getting better from here. I mean, I just really like seeing this, this carrier. Like it gives me such strong Everspace One vibes. I don't know. Now let's just show this off real closely, literally. Like these things will throw you around when you get too close to them. And it's an EMP effect. And depending on how much resistance you have to varying effects in the game, you could get thrown around for a short while. And also depending on where your positioning is or where enemies are moving you to, you can also get knocked about in various asteroids nearby. It can hurt a lot. It can hurt a lot. Pick up a little bit more loot. Maybe we'll scrap a bit more out of this site as well. I know there's one, is it on this side? Am I upside down? Oh my gosh, I think I'm upside down in this location technically. Oh, hello there. Okay, whoop. Cooling unit, nice, okay. Debris, I didn't actually want to pick you up, but thank you for your excitement. Wanted to move you. There we go. We got electrocuted from the, from behind. That was a little painful. Excellent. All right, see you later. <laughs> Shocking discovery! All right, there you go, Nurston. I was for you. I can't remember where that pit was. That was, Oh, it's right there. There are a lot of other little hidden nuances uh, about these environments, of course. So when this does go live next month, don't think I've shown you all of it. I'm, I'm barely scratching the surface. But we're really happy with how this is coming along. Can we get our own drones? Uh, that is something that is... Uh, uh, that's a, that's a question. 
Wow, guys, give me a raise. Anyway, um, so, ouch. I should probably be paying attention to the environmental hazards here. Uh, I'm gonna pause it. Basically, <clears throat> uh, drones as of right now in Everspace 2's environment, you can find deactivated ones and, and uh, activate them and they follow you around. Now, we know that that's not the most exciting thing, especially for you drone lovers out there who would play the gunship and, you know, create a bunch of combat drones or Weber drones or have like a specific style of play. Um, and I can assure you that there's more in the territory of drone player drone control um, that will be happening in the future. It's just not at a point where we can talk and crack open that up too much. Okay. Very, very good. Always a pleasure to watch you play. Hey, it's always a pleasure to have you guys sneak on in here, express yourselves, ask questions. It's great. Would we? Would it be possible to enter a waiting loading screen in between sectors? Um. Technically, I guess there's a very small one uh, through the warp gate. Whenever you're using the warp gate, I mean, I could probably show it on stream. I want to stick around in Zarkov here a little bit longer. But basically, when you use a warp gate and it opens up and then you fly through, the screen goes black for a couple moments. That's the loading screen, effectively. And then it loads in the new location that you're flying through. With all sincerity, like, our load times, um, like, we're kind of cataloging how it flows, right? Because we don't want to produce a product that you're sitting around waiting on, okay? Um, <laughs> so, to that, that... That also sounds like I'm digging at other games. That's honestly not. It's more of like, this is our experiences with games. We know that you don't want to wait to get into your next location. That's how it is. So we've, we're have we taking great care in optimizing that. Um, I mean, shoot, even going into the map screen like this, you guys probably remember there was that delay that really sucked. That really sucked, right? Where it's like you hit the map button and then you're like, uh, okay, is the is the game working? Is the game working? It would take like a whole second delay until it opened up. We don't want that to happen. Same thing with travel times. That's important to us. So we are nipping that in the bud as we go. That's There's some fine optimization going on through the team regarding that. That should be the heaviest, heaviest loading uh, within the game, honestly. Oh, come on. My my aim is real bad right now. Oh, he's got a little bit of shields left. Hang on, I want a one shot. I'm not doing so hot. I'm just gonna fight this guy to listen to the music. Ow. Whoops, whoopsies. Whoop! What's that sound? Oh, hello there. See you later. Oh, goodness. Whoop! Okay. All's well and fine and dandy. I did see a container though. Uh, probably don't want to slam into an asteroid. Gotta be, gotta be real careful when exploring these locations. Oh, hello. Other side of the ship, I guess. Nice. Very good. Could be a dangerous maze mission with these crystals. Yeah. There's a single outlaw drone hidden somewhere in Cedo that you can equip. There's multiple actually. When does this drop on experimental? Um, so I believe our schedule surrounding experimental, um, I think the, the last times we did experimental branches, they were approximately a week out, if not a couple days out before the official drop. So I would I would have that style of expectation 
for when we're nearing the launch of Zarkov. Yes, I say schedule because it's fun. If you're not having fun, you're doing it wrong, okay? I'm just gonna straight up tell you guys that. <laughs> But they don't follow you if you leave the system. Correct. Yes. Yeah, no, we, we will have more... Um, we'll have more information on drones in the future. I have to leave it at that. I, want, I, I, I hope that you will be patient with me. Drones are just not a priority right now as we're working on Zarkov. Wait, my sensors are damaged? Oof. Oh, gosh, that does stink. Yeah, that's a, that's an ouchies. We need a, we need a base to go to. We need a base to go to. Oh my gosh. There's no bases that I can show you yet in Zarkov. What a doozy. What a doozy. Eric toying with his prey to listen to the jams longer, savage. Yeah. <laughs> That's a really good point. Load times are pretty good on your system. Oh, that's good to hear. That's good to hear. Yeah, I mean, it's a it's it's a constant battle. It's, there's gonna be times when it's like you go to Prescott and your frames drop to negative seven, right? It's gonna happen. And we are independently cataloging those situations and then bottling them together to figure out what we can do that's best for the various systems that are, you know, operating our game space. Oh, man. It's just Cedo music, but I love the travel music, guys. Mm. Is it just me? Is it hard? Is it hard time to lock on with Thermogun? Uh, I have not used a Thermogun this stream, so I haven't tested that. I don't know. If you are having issues with lock-ons for the Thermogun, I would like to know about them. When you attack the Okars and blasting them, they don't drop stuff. Why is this happening? Um, Finny Master, the long story short is when the Okars were added, um, we were adhering more towards the system of a wanted level that's our primary focus with the okar we didn't want them to be used for grinding out loot yet so i'm pretty confident their drop tables are actually zero uh for part of that reason now that will very likely change in the future but we wanted to get the okar in there um, and we didn't want to encourage players just, like, savaging all of them needlessly. But we'll find a middle ground solution, I am sure of it. Was the release date announced for the update? Uh, the release date will be uh, July. It will be next month. Um, and, I mean, I think that it's going to be easier to assume it'll be late July, uh, much like our April update was a little bit later in April um, for our our last drop, right? So I'm I'm gonna say July, and we'll go from there. Yeah, I I did specifically say it could be August if need be, and I'm more saying that to cover my butt, guys. And I hope that you get that. It's not like we want to delay, and Everything as of right now is on task. Everything's on track, okay, for a July drop. So know that, okay? We haven't had anything super crazy spring up on us and be like, oh snap, we have to change everything. Hang on a second. You know, like, it hasn't been like that uh, lately anyway. It's just been a process. We're sticking to the plans and the plan is July drop. So end, end of July is where we are aiming for and very likely where the update will drop. Negative seven frames. I like that. Traveling back in time seems like a cool feature, right? My computer's so bad. I play games backwards. 
Oof. All right. Let's see. I want to make sure I get any more questions. Uh, oh, I missed I missed one from Stig3 who said, "Hey, Rockfish Games and chat, y'all good? Hey, what what a gentleman coming in asking how everyone else is doing? Thank you for that question. Um, I can't speak on behalf of all of Rockfish, but for myself being a part of it, I can say that this side is happy as a clam. <laughs> I love me some Zarkop and showing you guys what it looks like." Really, 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 really happy with how things have been progressing with it. And I'm I'm showing you, I'm showing you guys some of the easier to digest spots. I mean, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be honest there. I'm showing you the easier to digest locations. We haven't even got into like the really crazy stuff yet. Are there still key giveaways? No, no, no. Um, we are not doing key giveaways right now. If we have more plans for key giveaways, we will make the appropriate announcements. So just be following us on our various channels and whatnot so that you don't miss your chance to do so. I will say that since we've kicked off an early access, there have, we like, we've definitely scaled back what that looks like. So um, there have been, there have been uh, discounts for Everspace 2 as well. So if you do uh, follow Everspace 2 on Steam, you can see, um, like, I think we have like a 10% off, just as kind of like a, hey, we're working on Zarkov. If you want to dive in, like this could be a really big opportunity for you to see what we're really doing and get involved in the development process, you know, stuff like that. Um, but we're not gonna do anything super crazy, like 70% off. Like, I feel like that would be a, such a huge disservice to our Kickstarter backers, you know? number of enemies so the music's not gonna get too crazy oh my gosh there we go oh too many goods dang that's a huge improvement Advertisement detected. I mean, look, I, I'm going to be very realistic here. Obviously, these streams are for the community, right? But they're also meant to be insight as to what the heck we're working on and why. So to that sense, yes, it's a self-promotion of our product. But it's not in a way that it's like, Oh my gosh, if you buy Everspace 2, you're gonna grow th seven feet tall and you're gonna get all the babes and <laughs> like, we're not, I'm, I'm like telling you like it is, okay? That's all. So yeah, it's an advertisement, but it's a healthy one. It's an informative one. And if you want to know more, stick around and ask questions. That's how it works. <laughs> it's all good. I feel like this this guy spawned in the exact same spot that he was at last time. Oh my gosh, that splash damage was insane. That splash damage came from our perk right here. Crit happens. Did we boost the range of that or what? I think that we got to nerf that. You should not be able <laughs> Crit happens just immediately crushed that ship. Oh my gosh. I kind of don't want to change it because that was awesome, but... Uh, whoa! <laughs> that splash damage rain was, uh, that's, uh, pretty intense there. Pretty intense there. Hmm, let's see. Uh, quick decisions! Quick decisions! Destroy these things! 
Take the pulse laser, perfect. Oh, the, the G-Force, the G, there was a G-Force one? Oh, okay. Sorry, I missed it, my bad. That's all good. Oh, I see, I see. Yeah, no, it's all good. I mean, shoot. He's not wrong though, we are available on G-Force now. Yeah, we wanted to, we wanted to spread the love. We want to provide as many opportunities as possible, so yeah. I mean, it's not like we're doing any sort of like, um, 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 words are not coming to me. I'm so excited about talking about things that sometimes I just completely blank. Exclusives, that's the word. We're not doing any exclusives. Like, you're not forced to buy it in one particular area. So if you want it on Steam, yeah, go for it. If you want it on GOG, go for it. If you want GeForce Now, go for it. Like, there, there's... We got opportunities to suit how you play your games. Whee! All right. Man, it'd be really cool if I could like whip around these asteroids somehow. <laughs> Everybody's like waiting for it. I just. <laughs> I'm such a tease! Oh, cruelty! Don't worry, guys. We'll have more to talk about with upcoming devices and perks and all that type of stuff in time. We gotta, we gotta pace ourselves, right? Like, we're getting... We've got this just first sampling of Zarkov right now. I've shown you four locations. Um, we're gonna be showing you even more. Um, I don't know if next week is gonna line up. I don't know. I don't know if that's gonna be how that works. Uh, but rest assured, we're putting everything together so that we can show you the hottest, latest stuff um, in a more or less um, finalized format so it doesn't look super broken, right? And that's what we are, that's what we're going to be doing from here until Zarkov's release. I mean, like, I'm literally showing you locations inside of Zarkov so you know we're getting closer and closer every day. Uh, and we'll continue to do that. We will continue to absolutely do that. So, um, so yeah. Wish the game had a better, bigger follower base because it most definitely deserves it. Well, do I have news for you? You, yes, you, I'm talking to you who made that comment. Mm. You can tell your mom, your brother, your dad, your grandma, your grandpa, that guy that's really creepy at the grocery store. You can tell all of these people about Everspace 2 and what you think of their developers, right? And it doesn't even have to be like anything that I vocally say. I could say, oh my gosh, that Eric Schrader community ambassador guy, he's like the sweetest, nicest person in the entire world. And he does everything for me. It's the best thing ever. And oh my gosh, he's my best friend forever. You know, that doesn't matter. Whatever you say to your friends, that's gonna impact our follower base. And we absolutely appreciate anything and everything you have to say about us, especially with how our relationship is with you guys. Like. You guys know this, I always preach it, but I will continue to preach it every single stream. These streams are for you. We love it when you're pouring in here and answering questions because it's not, it's like, it's not just helping you and you're getting your questions answered, but it's, it's like, it shows you guys, like we really are connected to you. And it's so important that we convey that because like the things that you guys are talking about and what you're sharing, it matters so much to us. Like it makes such a big difference and we want to be as transparent as possible about this experience, about our development so that you understand the product. If you don't understand the project, we all lose. And that sucks. Like we've, we've been burned on a personal level with games out there from developers who didn't make that format as clear as possible. And then what we purchased and what we got were on a completely different scale. We want to avoid that at all freaking costs. Yeah, I'm kind of on a soapbox right now. I get it. But at the same time, like this is literally why we do these streams. And if you do like what we do here, let other people know and let them, let them soak it in and see for themselves like how it is we engage with others you know, be it on the forums, be it during the live streams, be it on our Discord, be it on Reddit, wherever it is that you engage with us, um, you know, you can then 
decide from there if we're worth supporting or not. That's how it works. So, uh, so that's why I really do appreciate you guys coming out here and asking your questions and having a lot of fun because that's what really makes this stream the stream that it is because of you guys. That's how it works. That's how it works. So thank you. Thank you to you guys. Um, so with that, with that last final little, <laughs> we have reached the end of the stream. So um, I know that we have covered. No, 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 it's okay. It's look, we 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 showed several locations in Zarkov. Okay, there's a lot more coming. Hopefully, this has kind of given you a taste that there's still a lot more in the works. While also, we're really refining that stylization, the theming that's going on. Something that I I keep kind of like returning to as well. We want each uh, system to have its style, its its flavor. And Zarkov is bringing that vortex. It will be delivered the end of July with a lot of new content, um, including but not limited to, um, like, shoot, let me let me read off a couple of these elements of this list. I, I don't know how many of you guys know this, but this is on the Zarkov update list, okay? The new system, Zarkov, the Vanguard light fighter, new enemy types, new creatures, natural phenomena of which you've seen some here, new main and side missions, new activities, mini missions, challenges, which I was trying to avoid mostly. Um, there's gonna be a new companion and there's gonna be increased level cap. These are all things that we've said will happen. So that is your baseline expectation for Zarkov and what's going to be delivered at the end of July, okay? That's not a small number of things. <laughs> and that's why I'm, I have to be really careful pacing out what we're showing on these streams but also um, why I'm just like so happy and excited to answer your questions and like really get into this. So it's, it's really good. It's really good. Oh my goodness. Okay. So, <laughs> so after all of that, guys, I just have to say one more time, thank you so much for coming out to these streams. Um, if any of you are wondering where you can follow us and get more information, well, boy, do I have a welcome page for you. You can find us on discord.gg slash rockfish games. You can go over to, if you're on, Twitch right now, you know, that's an easy one. And same thing for YouTube, but we are present both there. Again, Rockfish Games is the name. We're also on Twitter. If you follow Rockfish Games, you will get the insight and retweets of Michael Shade, the CEO himself. Otherwise, if you want all things Everspace 2, you can follow us at Everspace underscore game. We also repost a lot of beautiful artwork that you guys tend to do over on the Instagram side of Everspace underscore game. We obviously have that subreddit as well. Tap things off. Oh my goodness, it's so much fun. You guys are great, you guys are solid, and I just, I love you so much. You really, you really make my week, like tapping off the end of Fridays, like I can rest well tonight knowing that you guys have been taken care of. And if you haven't been taken care of, if, you, if I'm not speaking the truth here and you're like, man, he missed my question, I'm really concerned about X, Y, or Z, let me know. Come over to the Discord. We have an Ask Dev Questions channel. Drop the question that was missed. Or if you're really passionate about an idea or a concept that you think we don't know how to develop properly and we have to go in this particular direction, head on over to the Steam forums and shout it loud and proud. I'm sure that somebody might give you some flack for your ideas, but that doesn't matter. What matters is we read it, we digest it, and if it's worth it, you might see a little piece of you end up in the game. So thank you for being a part of this development process. Don't stop being awesome. I won't stop being Eric Schrader, your community ambassador for Rockfish Games. We'll catch you next week. Maybe we'll have more stuff to show and secretly reveal. I don't know, but uh, yeah, that's all I got. Toodles. excited for all this Zarkov stuff like it's absolutely crazy like if you haven't seen the trailer you need to, you need to go watch the trailer there's there are like more locations in there that you haven't seen like I uh, uh, there's like the, there's like the super cloud formation it's oh my gosh like this is the gas gas harvesters there's like oh my gosh like I want to show you that so bad it's so freaking cool and then there's like this other one where, oh my gosh guys there's this one oh i can't i can't even like i can't even tease it i'm just excited because it's so freaking cool ah you, 
guys, I can't. Uh, uh, there's so much. <laughs> So if you haven't seen it, I believe Shu is sharing the YouTube video for the teaser trailer of Zarkov. Go watch that. I gotta get out of here. Oh, I'm so excited. Ah!